Hi, I'm Judy Tayabji. Thanks for joining us today. Today we're going to talk about a very special issue. Notwithstanding that there's a thunderstorm that may be distracting us, it brings more of us inside to talk about something very important. This is under the heading of social issues. As you know, we've talked about things like welfare, trafficking in women. We've had an anti-drug activist on the show. And today we're going to revisit the issue of gambling. There's been a lot going on under this heading. Gambling something that's picking up steam and we'll probably hear more about it this fall. But let's take a look at a background piece that was prepared for the 5.30 News, and it looks at gambling in an overview. I don't think we should, should delay. I think we should move ahead as quickly as we possibly can. It's really all about money. This year, about 50 million. 270 million next year, and the pot will keep growing. A major expansion of gambling in B.C. is just around the bend. But if you like playing these things, forget it. VLTs are banned. We're not going to allow what's, been, what's happened, for example, in Alberta, where VLTs have really been allowed to proliferate all over the place. We are instead going to allow slot machines in both charitable and destination resorts. And, and, at, and at the racetracks. There's going to be lots of these. The government is accepting recommendations to allow gambling to expand and charity-run casinos, including lots of slot machines. Also, destination resort-type casinos are going to be permitted if a municipality wants it. My sense of it is that uh, there, there would be a great deal of concern from some members of council and myself on this. But Bob Cross won't be able to nix the expansion of this casino or any other existing facility, and they will get bigger. Video lottery terminals are just electronic slot machines. This announcement pretty well throws the doors open completely to expansion of gambling in British Columbia. The only Liberal opposition to the announcement was expected, but even some New Democrats aren't too happy. Do you approve of your, slot machines that in charity-run casinos? No. Why not? Because they're, they're, they don't work very well and there are some serious problems with them. She's not fond of destination resort casinos either, but the government's made up its mind. Well, I'm not really trying to sell anything. I'm announcing a policy. Uh, it's a policy that will give a much-needed windfall to the B.C. Treasury. Remember, it's all about money, and some of the profit will be used to pay for new government programs addressing the social problems gambling brings. Now, that announcement came out a couple of months ago. Since then, there have been some developments, and there's some movement that the government may be looking at public discussion of this. You should be aware that the government has said that municipalities will now be able to decide if they don't want an expansion of gambling. But how that's going to happen is still a gray area. We'll be back after a quick break with Dr. Richard Lipsy from SFU, who's prepared a report on this and your calls. Tayabshi is brought to you in part by CFAX 1070, Victoria's News Authority. Linda eats the same thing every weekday morning. Day after day, week after week. Toast is toast. Now Linda's eating Eggo waffles on weekdays. They're as quick as toast and a delicious change from the everyday. Kellogg's Eggo waffles. Lego, your same old breakfast. Regular lenses show reflections and that doesn't look good. There are a lot of reflections. Yeah, I see reflections everywhere. Now at Lens Crafters, I have new lenses called Invisibles. They reduce reflections up to 90%. Wow, it's so clear. So people see more of your eyes. You look better, even see better almost twice as well when driving at night. Only Lens Crafters can make Invisibles in almost any pair in about an hour. Helping someone look and see their best, that means everything to me. New Invisibles, only at Lens Crafters. Industrial Plastics and Paints offers a remarkable variety of products. Paints and accessories, plastics for marine, industrial, or home use. And if we can't find it, we'll make it for you. Industrial Plastics and Paint. Industrial Plastics and Paints. 
There's no time to lose. Premium recreational paradise awaits you on beautiful Lake Cowichan. Paradise Village RV Park in Honeymoon Bay. Paradise is an RVer's dream location for families or snowbirds. Buy now and we pay the GST. Your piece of paradise is waiting for you at 32.5 with on-the-spot financing. Make your move. Invest today in paradise and save the GST. Just 90 minutes north of Victoria. Paradise Village RV Park in beautiful Honeymoon Bay. Gambling is something that looks like it's going to be expanding and starting this fall. We should be making some noise about it if we have concerns. The government says that they're looking at other ways to expand revenue to government and to some charities. But what does this really mean? Today we're joined by Dr. Richard Lipsy. He's a professor of economics at Simon Fraser University and he's prepared a report on this. Thank you very much for joining us. Pleasure to be here, Judy. Now, in this report, uh, you started off um, to look at this as a very sort of academic thing, but but as a concerned citizen now, you've presented some of, uh, of your findings in analyzing this. Yes, I was asked to take a look and evaluate what the government's projections were for the revenues and the costs. They were overestimating the revenues, underestimating the costs. But then I got very disturbed about the whole process. I mean, in a sense, not to mince words, they're trying to sneak it in by the back door without having a real proper public discussion as to whether people really want it. Well, and actually, it's interesting because this has become a political issue for the last gosh, almost four years where they keep saying well, we're going to have a casino in downtown Vancouver and do a few other things. And it seems like every time the public sort of make noise about it, it goes away and it comes back in a different form. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of a funny thing. We have some um, background information on this that we'd like to share with the viewers that comes a, a little bit out of uh, Dr. Lipsy's report and a few other things. So let's take a look at the issue of how gambling started uh, to be organized in BC. In 1987, the provincial government entered an agreement with municipalities to limit the hours of operation and the sizes of bets at gambling establishments. They also prohibited slot machines from operation, as these are the most addictive form of gambling. And they gave the people of BC the assurance that they could always say no to a casino through a referendum. Today, the provincial government is, on its own initiative, raising maximum betting limits, increasing the hours of operation of casinos, increasing the numbers of tables in casinos, and increasing the floor space, space of gambling establishments in BC. Some charitable casinos are being turned into destination casinos with up to 300 slot machines, which are being added. And the forms of gambling allowed are being expanded to take in the internet. And who knows where we'll go from there. Um, now this gives some people some kind of background of where we're headed. I guess what I'd have to ask you though is after looking into this, what do you think some of the consequences are, in a nutshell, hmm. of gambling? <coughs> well, they're pretty significant social costs. So the government in its, in its report said there haven't been any noticeable in Canada, but we haven't had big gambling long enough. So most of the evidence comes from the states. The nice thing about the states is that some counties have gambling, some, the next door county doesn't. Mm -hmm. So you can really get a, a view, view of the costs and the social costs are really quite big. When you say that though, the government has said, and in so, in some um, governments have built in those social costs to expanded gambling, which is kind of strange, but um, they say, okay, we recognize more social costs, but there'll be more jobs, there'll be an economic uh, upturn. Uh, a lot of people are looking for work right now and they figure they can get a job in a casino. What do you say to that? Mm. Well, two things, the job estimates all the evidence around the world tells us that they're overestimated. What you see are the 400 people who have jobs in casinos. That's visible. Right. But where did that money come from? Every dollar that those people earn has to be lost by somebody. And if you lose money in a casino, then you're not going to spend it on something else, recreation or shoes for the baby, whatever it may be, so that virt all those dollars are merely diverted. Those dollars created employment somewhere else. So basically what you're doing is shifting employment out of those other things into casinos. But when you say something like that, a lot of people in BC uh, go to Reno, they go to Vegas, and they go and they take a certain amount of money, that's what you call disposable income, and they say, well, that's where I've chosen to put it. And, and people who are in favor of gambling argue that instead of all that money leaving the province, going down south, uh, it could go to a destination resort here. So yeah. what do you say to that? What we get estimated is about a quarter of the total jobs are from money that would have been spent outside of the province. A quarter of the jobs that of would be jobs. created. Okay. Three quarters of the jobs are money that would have been spent creating employment somewhere else in BC and some other activity. Now if you take those one quarter of the jobs and look at all the jobs that were created by other activities in BC over the last 10 years, right. it took 10 days 
Each 10 days, we created that many new jobs that the total casino expansion is going to create. So in order to get 10 days of job creation, we're going to take all these social risks, we're going to increase these costs and everything in order to get what really is a small increase in total employment. Okay, but a lot of people would wonder, how is that possible that you can be that uh, determined to say, if uh, let's say a couple of casinos go into downtown Vancouver, for example. Well, uh, let me back up. Going back to the thing on destination resorts. Mm. What the what's the difference between destination resort gambling and putting a casino in downtown Vancouver, for example? Yeah. Well, a destination, it's, it's a loose term, but it's a, a full-fledged casino with restaurants and bars and all the gambling facilities that you go to explicitly to gamble as opposed to just finding a slot machine in a shop or wherever it may be. Right. Okay, now, Vancouver and Victoria has the charity gambling. The, the addition of slot machines, all of the things you had on your display, right. will effectively turn them into destination casinos. They'll be full-fledged casinos. And if you remember, it, they said in 86, 87, when they put them in, they had all these restrictions. They wouldn't have this, they wouldn't have that. Now, unilaterally, on their own, they violated every one of those restrictions. They've said, no, we won't have VLTs. But they said they wouldn't have slot machines five years ago. Five years from now, what will they say? More competition. We're going to add VLTs. Okay. Let's go to the phone lines. Now we'll be taking your calls on the issue of gambling. We're talking to Dr. Richard Lipsy, who's from SFU. And we'll start with Richard in Vancouver. Hi, Richard. Hi there. Hi. Go ahead. Um, I think it's a, it's a kind of a mixed issue with me. Um, I think it all depends on how it's done. First of all, I just wanted to comment. I don't think that we deal in, remember, we've always thought of gambling for the most part up, up until a few years ago as a vice. Okay. Um, we don't deal with vices, I don't think, very well in North America. We deal with it in a very immature method. Okay. Um, one of the things, though, that I, like from Vancouver, when Steve Wynn had his proposed casino, I was against that because I was worried that uh, if they were going to encroach into the east side of Vancouver, they were going to displace a lot of uh, single-room occupancy hotels right. and people that way. Okay. Uh, but what I think it all depends on where it's going to be done. I mean, it's kind of hypocritical in many respects because we have a lot of 649. We have lotteries. Right. We right. are gambling now. Right. So the question of being holier than thou is some, in some respects, and anti-gambling people kind of bothers me. Okay. But, I, but I will just uh, leave with one question, and I would like to the, uh, your guest, if he could explain a little further, uh, what would happen if charity casinos go into destination casinos? Will that affect their monies to, in order to operate whatever nonprofit organization they're doing? Thank okay. you. Okay, that's a good question, actually. Uh, what's the cut for the charities? Which, well, of course, was one reason people hmm. said, okay, we can have gambling because <coughs> charities get most of the money. The question to the c is that the cut is being reduced quite substantially. Yeah. So, but they say they will earn the same total. That means that in spite of what they say, well, gambling won't increase, there must be a big increase in gambling to maintain the total for charities. Could I just say one other thing sure. to the caller? Uh, I love to gamble. I love to play blackjack. I go to Reno occasionally. Uh, but uh, So it's not a matter of sin. It's a matter of the process that everywhere there's been a referendum, the Vancouver City Council, the Vancouver Police Force, the uh, Victoria City Council hasn't made up their mind exactly, but there's a lot of opposition. And the process is that this has not been aired. The government has already ordered the slot machines. They're trying to do this before we get a chance. If there was a referendum and 60% of the people say we want it, let them have it. But what I think is happening is this is being pushed in by the back door without a full discussion of the costs and the consequences. And I think one reason might be because they'll get answers they don't want if well, they discuss right. it. Um, and, and there's, there's so much that can be talked about under this as far as what the future consequences are. Let's talk to Jasmine now in Surrey. Hi, Jasmine. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Um, I just had a comment about, um, he said, the last caller, so that he went down, he goes down to Reno to gamble. Right. And your guest said that they're just reallocating the jobs from, say, baby shoes to the gambling casinos, the jobs right. there. Right. Well, I think that if people are going to go gamble, then they're, they're going to go down to Reno and give the Americans the jobs. Okay. Well, as that's opposed to keeping the jobs here in Canada. Okay. Thanks for that comment. That's and that's uh, actually one that I hear quite often is uh, people are saying, "Well, let's keep the economic gain here." Um, and I don't know whether having a gambling casino more accessible would suddenly make a whole bunch of different people being able to gamble that way. I don't know. I mean, I, not being an expert in this. And insofar as there's evidence from Montreal and other places that people who go to casino go for a full package holiday, they go anyway to Reno or Las Vegas. Right. That what you pick up is some people who might go just across the border down to Bellingham to gamble. So okay. I think it's fair to say that maybe 10% of the money that is earned 
here would have gone to Bellingham and we'll pull it back. But the, most of it that goes to the big holiday and the destination casino, we won't get back. It does seem, though, that when people, I mean, we hear a lot of people saying, well, we have 649 and we gambled at that. And there's, there's already, you know, established gambling um, of different forms. Um, the government is supposed to be giving that 649 money into health care and into some of that funding. And I know a lot of people are angry because they're not allocating it that way. How do we know that if they expand gambling that any of that money will actually be going into... <laughs> into uh, social services. Yeah. Well, ask yourself, do you trust the commitment to do something five years from now? Uh, just one other thing that uh, uh, there's this big increase in, in gambling on the internet that you mentioned. That's not right. government. There's How does that work? Well, you, can, you can dial up the internet now. We don't ask you how old you are. They don't ask you for an age limit. Oh. Uh, you can just gamble and you can gamble. They set them up in the Bahamas or somewhere, cost them nothing, no regulations, they, all of it's profit. Wow. So they can compete and this is just beginning. So there's going to be big pressure on the government to maintain the gambling here and not have people gamble on the internet. How will they do it? They will raise, have to raise the payouts, they'll have to add the things that they say they won't have now, and they'll have to give less to charity. So all the pressure is going to be... But surely internet gambling <coughs> doesn't have to give anything to, care, to charities. No, no, exactly. Not regulated exactly. at all. Well, that's kind of scary. Okay, we're going to take a quick break. We'll be back with more of your calls. We're talking about the issue of gambling in BC. Appears to be coming whether we want it or not and whether we discuss it or not. Back after break. Tayab Shi is brought to you in part by Metro Lexus Toyota, leaders in customer satisfaction. Trident has changed. Wow. The taste is brighter, bolder, totally animated. And it's developing quite a following. The revolutionary new taste of Trident. It'll bring your mouth to life. Choo -choo! And who knows what else? Two scoops. Sound the alarm! Come on! Wait, it's Kellogg's Raisin Bread. Two scoops of raisins in Kellogg's Raisin Bread. Two scoops. Yeah. <laughs> Bigger raisins. Keep going. You're almost there. Do you see it? Do you see it? Where is it? This summer, the Benson and Hedges Symphony of Fire. It'll be a blast. CDI College opened opportunities I never imagined possible. They gave me the training I needed for success in the current technology job market. And they offered me the right options to suit my needs and schedule. People at CDI really care. From my first phone call to the job search program, they were with me all the way. Do you have what it takes? Serious technology training for serious jobs starts soon. Call CDI College of Business and Technology and prepare yourself for a new career. We're talking about gambling in BC with Dr. Richard Lipsy from Simon Fraser University. And we'll go straight back to the lines and we'll start with John in Abbotsford. Hi, John. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Um, I, I, we just recently had a referendum here in Abbotsford. Okay. And the outcome uh, was basically two against, two against one four. Right. And recently I was out in uh, Manitoba and I noticed that there was a lot of elderly people, um, my uncles included, that were gambling excessively on these VLT machines and losing great deals of money. Right. Which was putting a, a lot of stress on their relationships. Yeah. And I kind of agree with one of the comments you had made that uh, they don't really want us to, to vote on this and to discuss it because uh, they've already made up their mind. They're going to go ahead and do it anyhow. Right. And I really think that if they went to the uh, British Columbian people after what's happening in Manitoba and in Alberta, yeah. 
um, they would they wouldn't allow it to happen. Okay, well, thank you for that comment, John. Uh, I I actually think that with an informed debate, most BCers would say no expansion and certainly no smaller cut to charity. VLTs and slot machines, what are, what are they, and you know why are they a problem? They're by far the most addictive forms of gambling. There's been a lot of research, and they're more addictive than almost any other. And you can lose your money faster in in, in one of these, and you can lose you know un, unlimited amounts of money. I've so, heard of people going to a ma a Seven Eleven in the corner and losing yeah, a whole paycheck. That's right. That's right. And uh, uh, you don't have to, if you go to horse races, there's, there's seven or eight horse races and then they're over and you come right, home. Right. Uh, it's great. These are open all day and all night, so they're much more addictive. And, uh, so, and the government's ordered the slot machines. Yeah. So, you know, so, that just makes me angry. I mean, that's what gets me. We, if we were in a debate them. and people voted that they wanted them, that's fine. But now their government's got to justify a position they've already taken. <sighs> And you know they're going to find the numbers to do that. <laughs> okay, let's talk to Grace now in Coquitlam. Hi, Grace. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Um, I've been to Winnipeg several times, and I haven't seen anything really bad go wrong in the casinos. So okay. There's no drinking in there. Okay. They're very well run, I think, by the government. And I think the uh, government has paid off their deficit. Now, whether that's true or not, I don't know. But, uh, okay. And you talk about in Manitoba. Yes. Okay. Well, so that's so. What you're saying is maybe this is something to explore as a revenue source if it's run as well, well to as to find it's out run. how it's run and. and uh, okay. And think, yeah. All right. Thanks for that comment. Um, I guess what she's. It's interesting because when you hear from her, I suppose the previous caller, that's where the debate should be happening. Yeah. This is what we should have, yeah. and we should have debate. And people should now look at the evidence. Here's what we've learned from Winnipeg. Here's what we've learned from Halifax, right. which seems to be a bust in some of the Maritimes, but. This is a debate we haven't had. Yeah. Uh, but I um, will say that the American evidence is that you get a lot of forgery, you get a lot of petty crime, you get a lot of assault, you get more prostitution, you get uh, embezzlement. People are trying to, the problem gambler. Now you don't see that when you walk the streets of Winnipeg, but right. when you look at the crime statistics, you see they tend to be up 10 to 15% when you add a full-fledged casino. And it could also be, because Winnipeg has um, fewer people there, maybe that has the influence, maybe more community-minded. But if we want it, that's fine. But let's, let's really see it. what we're buying before we buy it. Okay. Let's talk to Alana now in Victoria. Hi, Alana. Hi. Hi, go ahead. Um, I think that it's a bad income. It would bring more jobs, but think of the issue of drug dealing. That also brings in a lot more jobs. <laughs> it would, bring, <laughs> it would yes. bring in a lot more jobs, but it is, but it is also bad income it's also addictive and you do lose a lot of money in it okay well thank you very much for that comment. one sentence answer very good point we could have a lot of jobs if we grew cop poppies here and made uh, oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not even gonna touch that yeah. <laughs> we're trying to get through some more calls we'll talk to Jim now in Coquitlam hi Jim hi Judy yeah go ahead please uh, I think gambling the casinos would be a bad idea because with the casinos would come the gangs more gangs and I think if the government wants more money, they should uh, quit giving them, uh, quit uh, by closing down Stanley Park. They gave away, and there, that was a tour spot, and quit uh, throwing away all the tour spots. Okay. Well, that's an interesting comment, obviously, saying that have, let's have some different priorities uh, to raise money. Uh, I guess that when I get back to this, this is what you're talking about when you say there should be a public debate. Yeah. Uh, Grace in Coquitlam said she went to Manitoba, and it was fine. Mm. Um, but, you know, we need to have more of this kind of feedback. And we should get clear, it's not a lot of money. Even if, if we took the government's own figures, they, we got a lot into trouble from the government for this. We said it's the equivalent of raising the PST from 7% to 7.1%. That's the amount of money you're bringing in. Really? Now, I don't want to raise the PST to 7.1, but am I willing to risk all the social consequences yeah. in order to avoid that little increase in the tax rate? Okay. Let's talk to Mark now in New Westminster. Hi, Mark. Hello. Hi. Go ahead, please. Uh, my complaint is that my 18-year-old daughter and her boyfriend, who are having trouble paying their household bills, are always asking me to help them out with the phone and the hydro. Right. Right. They can go to the corner store and spend $5 on necessaries, but they can't seem to walk out of there without spending $5 on scratch and win lottery tickets. Right. And if they're not old enough to buy cigarettes, how come they're old enough to buy lottery tickets and, and, and work on that addiction? Okay. Well, thank you for that comment. Uh, I guess also we should talk about the, 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 the poverty and despair sometimes leads people to want to buy lottery tickets and make the... They, they want a quick fix, and sometimes they're more 
tempted uh, into this downward spiral. But at least the lottery ticket's one five dollars, and you get you buy some hope for it. Right. But if you go into a store with a slot machine in it, you can put five dollars, ten dollars, twenty dollars, borrow the money, and there's no limit to it. So it's much more addictive, and you lose much more money. In, in your study, I've uh, got to get back to the phone. Oh, I'll okay. ask you. Maybe I'll ask you later if I have time. Let's go to Brent <laughs> now in Sayward. Hi, Brent. Hi there. Hi, go ahead. Hi. Uh, my issue is if the anti-gambling anti people in the inner city have such a problem with getting a full-fledged full casino, uh, they should put it out into a rural area, like just outside the city or something. Just like to, in Sayward? Like, well, Sayward's <laughs> a little far out. <laughs> 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 but anywhere like out into the further areas like Mission or somewhere further out okay. just to control it. Okay, thanks Thank for that. That's a, okay, a lot of people say that, that maybe mm -hmm. it should go uh, somewhere where you have to go there and that's the only thing that's there. If we it? had to have one, I would say yes, that, that definitely. Okay. Uh, but don't forget, they're telling Vancouver and Victoria they have to have this big increase without over their opposition. Okay, let's take, try to take a last call, Janet from Delta. Hi, hey. Janet. Hey, good afternoon. Good afternoon. I just want to say that I totally agree with the speaker uh, as far as him saying, you know, like what the government is doing. We didn't want the gambling. We didn't want GST. But what did they do? They did it anyway. Right. Uh, I, I think that it will bring good revenue in because a lot of people do go away and spend their money. But the point is they're doing it behind our back. They're doing it without us agreeing. Okay, thank you for that comment. Uh, so there you've got someone who may disagree with your position, but it it's definitely agrees with you saying we need to debate our mm -hmm. positions. Where do we go from here? Is there a public process? Well, I wish there was. I, we, we want to pressure the government, and the government is amenable to pressure. See, if enough people care, like no-fault insurance, enough people cared and something happened. Right. If enough people care about this, they could at least force a debate. But it's, it's the 11 and a half hour because the slot right. machines are already in transit. Okay. We're going, <coughs> thank you very much for joining us, and we're yeah. out of time. It's been a pleasure. <laughs> okay. I wish we could have talked more. <laughs> Me too. We'll take a quick break and be back with my opinion. This portion of Tyabji is brought to you by Pacific Opera Victoria. What is the future made of? A new kind of beauty. A new kind of strength. An engineered wood beam that's dependable as steel. Affordable for homes. Exacting and versatile. And reconstituted entirely from long strands of wood. It's called Paralam. And it was created for the world by Macmillan Blodell making the most of a renewable resource. We're almost ready. Go get the cones. Your favorite, roughage. Don't put up with over-frozen ice cream. Maytag's exclusive new dual-cool refrigerator keeps its cool, so you can keep yours. Another great idea from Maytag, the dependability people. Available at Midland Appliances, Vancouver's appliance specialists. We want to show off the real teas in our Snapple tea drinks. Ideas, anyone? Have a tea party. Aren't they great? Feel the material. Great. So, so oh, soft. It's... I got to play baseball this is when delicious I was in tea. college because mm. I was on my school. Now I have the insert in this shoe, you know. Very Getting my carpet cleaned tomorrow. Oh, great. Thanks for the idea. You and Snapple, making yeah, the best up on Earth even more. better. Chrysler's Marathon Sales Event is here in BC. With 0% financing on all 1997 Neons, and our lowest financing of the year on Stratus and Breeze, plus great savings on many more. Also, our lowest financing on Jeep Grand Cherokee, plus special deals on Dodge Ram and the second sliding door at no extra charge, plus our lowest lease of the year on Canada's best-selling minivans. So hurry, Chrysler's Marathon ends soon. See your local BC Chrysler Jeep Eagle dealer now. Some of the most beautiful places on the planet are right here in British Columbia. Whether you're heading to Prince Rupert, Bella Coola, or Skidigat, you can now take a BC ferry to get there. You can travel the Inside Passage, the Discovery Coast Passage, or to the Queen Charlotte's, and we'll talk about that remote romance on tomorrow's show.
And tonight at 7.30, please join us for a special edition of Tayabji where we look at social services issues. Today we talked about gambling, and while I'm not a gambler, I don't mind other people doing it, and if you want the right to gamble, I want the right to be free from the debts you incur when you gamble. And I also want a public process so that my opinion can be heard as well as yours. I'm Judy Tayabji, and that's my opinion. What's yours?